Hi folks, I'm back here with another Time Stories spoiler review, and today we're talking about Prophecy of Dragons, uh, the second expansion or the third adventure in the Time Stories, whatever you would like to call it. Uh, if you still want to see a non-spoiler review of this, look at Saturday Morning Sam Flange Podcast, episode 208, because that's where we talk about. This is all spoilers, so please, please, please turn away, go away if you don't want to see spoilers. Uh, so just to set things up, we played the first one. We were impressed. This one I was very impressed because it was different from the second one. And then this one comes around. And we said, okay, we've seen both versions of the game. Play fast, you know, fast and smash, smash and grab. We played, you know, be hard-earned detective. Is this going to be fast, smash and grab, or play detective? No, it's take your time and explore an open world. I've never seen this. Now, this is the only adventure that takes place in AT, alternative time. Um, meaning a fantasy land, you're in like a Dungeons and Dragons scenario. None of the other expansions from the White Cycle uh, take place in alternative time. Later on, they'll kind of explain why. But uh, this one was alternative time. We didn't know what AT meant at first, but we're like, okay. And we're like, oh, alternative time. Okay, now we can be a mage, a thief, a wizard, a warrior, a, you know, whatever. Uh, so priestess or whatnot and that was kind of cool there's tons of characters in here and there's tons of side quest and no matter who you are you can like if you're the thief or something or the woodsman or something you can go scavenger you can go to certain cards in the forest that other players can't if you're a wizard you can go to certain shops a wizard shop that no one else but the wizard can go to and i thought that's neat because you can play this game a thousand times and there's different roads to the, that lead to the same area just different paths to get there depending on who your characters are that was very unique i'd never that, that never occurred to me you could have something like that because like oh look at this the thief can go here, but no one else can. It's a thieves' den, yay! And so we kind of—I felt like we got a cheat there. Now this was the game where we talked about having the luckiest run in the world. It was the luckiest, luckiest. I like people would think I was making it up, rolling perfect double stars on all die. That happened twice when we really needed it, having the exact same numbers that we needed. I mean, everything just clicked. I mean, you would think we cheated if we talk about how we played this game because we were shocked that we did so well on this. But this is just open world, feels like D&D &D, done in a st time stories fashion. I mean, you do have time available. And of course, for the first time ever, you see a time device that when you think you're going to lose, it gives you 25 time. My buddy made fun of me. He's like, oh, you keep saying we're always going to die. I said, well, I didn't know there was a time device. We'd never seen one of those before. And we found another cube in this one, too. So we're like, oh, here's another time cube. Oh. And at that point, I thought, oh, well, probably if you didn't find the first one, you found this one. And maybe it says if you have a time cube later on. Uh, we noticed another time cube in here. We didn't notice they were different, by the way, either, because I kept the old time cube in the box since it had been a long time. It had been many months since we got to this one. But uh, playing Prophecy of Dragons was really interesting. Uh, ways to get money, there's a big market shop where you can just buy a billion things. Half of them you won't need unless you're particular characters uh, trying to do particular things. Like I said, all these side quests I'm sure lead to something. But again, this is a game that's, the replayability factor is here for all of these, by the way. For me it is. It's like watching my favorite movie, waiting a few years, forgetting about some of the, you know, all the middle, but remembering the end. That's what I would be like playing these games again. But I would definitely play them all again because I just think they're excellent. They're excellent games. Now, this is also where we get a little bit of meta story. Uh, the meta story is there's this group called the Scions who are basically screwing things up. Uh, they may have mentioned this at the very beginning. I can't remember, but I know this is where we kind of started noticing it. It's like, oh, Scions, they're the ones that screw everything up, and they're kind of like our enemy now. Okay, whatever. But that's where you start. it starts sprinkling in a little bit of that meta story, uh, heavily, I think. I don't think the first two expansions did much for the meta story at the time. Later on, we find out those are very, uh, Marcy case in, in particular is a very eventful uh, moment in time stories, but we didn't know that at the time. So this one kind of sprinkles in a little bit more of that meta story, like, okay, cool. But again, they found a third separate way to play the game, an open world game. You all will always go to the market to buy more stuff if you need it. You will always return back to the tavern to play the gambling game, to get more money so you can buy that stuff. Uh, you can always go back to some of these places because they say, hey, do you have the whatever? Oh man, I need to find that thing. Okay, and then you can go back. So going back and revisiting a bunch of these sites, not 
because you failed on your first run, but just because you're going to have to go back and forth in this open world and explore is really cool. Certain potions and formulas can come in very handy when you go to the dark level, what we call the underworld, you know, the, the upside down is kind of what we called it. But that was really cool too. It was cool that we were seeing visions. I, I, we haven't gone through all those cards, but we saw the uh, Marcy Case one, which my buddy flipped out on. He thought it was funny. The, the one of just people walking on donkeys through a desert or something. It's just a painting. It's nothing. It says nothing. I was like, that's really weird. It's explained later on, but I, it was just full of mystery and intrigue. And then it's a big battle at the end, you know, which some people have complained about. Oh, just battles, just no, no good puzzles here. Um, no, probably not, but it's one big epic fantasy adventure, which is what it was supposed to be. Now for us, again, this is when I said, well, we'll have to do a podcast on this too. And again, we weren't married to the idea at this point of doing podcasts on all these expansions. Uh, we said, well, we'll do this one because it is a little bit different. I mean, it is very different. So let's talk about this now. And I was thinking, how many different versions? I knew there were nine expansions or whatnot to this game. I was like, how many different versions are there of the ways to play this game? Because I saw this one and it's different from the Marcy case. It's different from Asylum, but it's still time stories. That's just great. So I absolutely love Prophecy of Dragons. Uh, this is one, and my even buddy said, you know what? He said, I'll play it again right now, just playing three different characters. You know, four different characters. I mean, because we can pick different characters and, and go on a different adventure to get to the same, you know, game ending spot. I so, said, yeah, I think I would too. I think there's more replayability here after you beat it over and over again than the first two. That's just me, though. But Prophecy of Dragons, really good. All right, folks, I will see you next time with another Time Stories spoiler field review.